In this, the second of our multi-part tutorial on rotums, we're going to describe how rotums are made. Specifically, we're going to discuss the three parts of a rotum blade, which include the wavelength selective switch, the channel monitor, and the amplifiers. And we will finish by discussing how fiber brag gratings and mirrors can be used to separate the light to different frequencies and to select one such frequency. To review, prior to the introduction of rotums, Optical add drop multiplexers were used to extract information from a fiber optic link. This involves taking all the information on the fiber, converting it from an optical to electrical interface, passing it through a router, extracting the information needed, and putting the rest back on the fiber. Here we see a fiber optic channel that has four separate lambdas or wavelengths embedded inside of it. It would be far more cost effective than to translate all these lambdas into electrical signals if we could simply select out one of these streams and just process it if all the information we needed was contained in this one color of light. Now let's look at some piece parts that we might use in order to try and extract this one frequency of light. We know that we can use a prism to separate uh, the different frequencies of light inside a stream into its various components. A fiber brag grating is a component similar to a prism in that it is the device inside the wavelength selective switch that is used to separate the light into its component colors. We also know that we can use a mirror to redirect light from one direction to another. Liquid crystals are also often used inside wavelength selective switches. These crystals can be used either as a digital switch, by applying voltage light can pass through, and by denying voltage light can be stopped. Alternatively, they are also sometimes used to control the gain of the output signal. By combining a fiber brag grating with a set of mirrors, we can construct a wavelength selective switch. As the light comes into the wavelength selective switch, the brag grating is used to separate the light into its various components. Using a set of mirrors, we can isolate one such frequency and feed it to the output port. A rotum blade combines the wavelength selective switch with two other pieces of critical circuitry. A preamplifier and an amplifier are used to boost the gain of the output signals. Separately, a channel monitor is used to ensure that all the frequencies of light that need to be present on the output are there and that the volumes are approximately the same. The channel monitor usually works in conjunction with the wavelength selective switch to tune the output to make sure that no one particular frequency of light has a volume that's much higher than the rest. If the volume gets too high on one of the frequencies, it can interfere with or even drown out the transmission on the other frequencies. There are basically two mechanisms by which rotums today are able to attenuate the output signals. One is a MEMS-based approach using mirrors and the other is a liquid crystal based approach. Let's look at each of these in turn. In a liquid crystal based attenuation approach, by varying the voltage across a liquid to spray crystal, we can basically attenuate the, the volume of the output signal. By changing the amount of voltage we pass through, we can allow a little bit of light to pass through or a much larger amount. We've already seen how mirrors can be used to redirect light inside of a wavelength selective switch, thereby allowing a particular output port to be selected. However, if we take this same mirror and add a second degree of rotation, we can basically take the output light and move it off center, thereby effectively reducing or increasing its amplitude. By using the channel monitor in a feedback loop, we can make micro adjustments to this mirror in the second degree of rotation and thereby adjust the volume of the output signal. This is what Verizon refers to as its inverted cost triangle. It shows that the switching costs in the network depend on the type of routing and switching that's involved. For example, all optical switching, such as that permitted by rotums, costs much less in the network than IP routing, which requires the conversion of optical to electrical. This is one of the main reasons why rotums provide a much more cost-effective mechanism in the network for carriers to switch their bandwidth than to translate all signals from optical to electrical every time access to the network is required. This has led to the saying, switch when I can, route when I must, and basically refers to the fact that when optical signals are switched purely at an optical layer, the switching costs are much lower.